I can't remember when I first had my suspicions. My wife, Freya, and I had been married for about five years. We met just after we had finished university. We were both at a friend's birthday party, and her friend's boyfriend was a good friend of mine. I am pretty sure I was invited so they could match us both up as I was introduced to Freya almost as soon as I arrived, and before I knew it, we were alone. I knew nobody at the party, but Freya and I hit it off immediately and talked most of the night. What got me was her smile and the way her eyes sparkled when she did. The warmth and friendliness of it was intoxicating, and I never got tired of seeing it. As we dated, I began to notice that her eyes only sparkled for me. We exchanged numbers and arranged to meet for coffee the next day which turned into the whole day. A year later we moved in together and two years after that we were married. I think her behavior began to change when she got a new job about two years after we got married. She was unhappy in her job and she felt her career wasn't progressing. I, of course, encouraged her. I could see her eyes sparkled less and her job was getting her down. How was your first day? I asked her when she got home when she had started her new job. The sparkle returned to her eyes when she smiled. She didn't answer. She just took me upstairs and we made love. After she settled into her new job, Freya became very career driven. She got a couple of promotions in quick successions, and soon she was earning more than me. When I mentioned that my supervisor was leaving, Freya asked me if I was going to go for it. Come on Charlie. You could easily lead your team, she encouraged me. My lack of enthusiasm annoyed her. The problem was while Freya had become career driven, I was very much a work to live kind of guy, and any leadership role held no interest for me, and I had an intense dislike of office politics. Don't get me wrong I earned very good money, plenty to fund my lifestyle, and have some left over. I was content to stay in my system administration role, especially as I was always able to earn enough to travel. We went away several times a year, exploring different countries. I loved adventures and I loved having them with Freya. Freya loved them too and loved having them with me as well, or so I thought. Things started to get awkward when Freya started to have calls from work and attended conference calls while we were away. Then she took her work laptop on our trips and insisted that we stayed in a hotel with Wi-Fi. I need to take this call, she would say. This is a very important meeting, or you go on ahead, I need to get this done. We can meet for lunch. We began to argue about her work. I was happy she was enjoying her job, but it was eating into her time together and worst of all when she looked at me, her eyes stopped sparkling. At this stage, I didn't think she was having an affair, at least if she was, it was with her work. With her latest promotion, she often had to work late, conference calls with the American office, and business trips away. I know what you are thinking, but her job did require her to do these things. My biggest worry was if she was going to be offered a job in New York. I knew she would take it, and that would have spelled the end of our marriage. Yes, we were drifting apart, but I still loved her, despite her long hours at work, business trips, and having little time for me. I said I wasn't sure when I had my first suspicions, but as I speak, now I do. My company got taken over and I knew I was going to be made redundant. I didn't mind so much despite the financial uncertainty. Freya was earning enough for the both of us to live on, and I was going to get a pretty good redundancy package, so I could still contribute at home while I looked for a new job. It just meant my traveling would have to stop for a while after I lose my job. However, because of my length of service, I was asked to help transfer all the servers to the new company. This meant I needed to be away from home for the odd week. About this time Freya began talking about a colleague who had been seconded to her office from her New York office. She couldn't stop singing his praises as she excitedly talked about how funny he was, how popular with the ladies and all the cliches that came with it. He is so ambitious, she told me, driving the dagger into me. Yes, you know where this is going, but this story is about how Freya's life crumbled by cheating on me not how she cheated. You only need to know this for context. Well, when I returned from my trips away, she would insist that I call before I left for home, and when I got home the bed sheets were always in the washing machine. I know, I know, the red flags were building up, but although I was getting worried, there wasn't enough for me to suspect an affair just yet. However, our intimacy which had dwindled now became non-existent. Freya would only give me the briefest of kisses. While she used to talk about this American colleague all the time, she now stopped. She jealously guarded her phone and wanted to know when I was next going to be away. I was now positive she was cheating on me. Two things now. Never cheat on someone who works in tech and cheaters when they think they are getting away with it, get lazy. I love traveling and I love tech. I never wanted promotions because it would have taken me away from technical work, and I am a hoarder of tech. I often bought old tech from my company. Webcams, modems, memory sticks. I had boxes full of it. So, it was no big deal for me to create a bit of D spyware. 
Wireless webcam started around my house in the lounge, front door, and bedroom. All connected to an old laptop which I converted into a web server. Some freeware downloaded from the internet, and I had my own spy recording system. That's what I called it, and it helped me set up my own business later, but truth be told it was really a homemade CCTV system, but it was still freakingly awesome. Being away from home meant I could set all this up, and Frey working late meant I could install it. I was actually quite proud of what I did, it had sound and everything. Once everything was in place, I caught her in the act. I'll be honest with you, I thought the batteries in the webcams would run out before I got the evidence, but Freya must have been desperate for sex because they were at it as soon as he walked through the door. Now, I had the evidence, but getting hold of it and seeing it was proving very difficult. Freya started to come home earlier and look down. She became a little more attentive, but still didn't want to make love with me. She later told me that she had to go on a trip to America, and she was quite excited about it. I think she planned to spend a week of work and ducking with this guy. I wanted to confront her in a big way when she got back and when she left, I downloaded some movie editing software and created what I could only describe as a corno of her and her lover. I watched the footage, anger burned inside me. Freya dragged the guy forcefully into the house and pulled him down for a hungry kiss before taking him by the hand and taking him into her bedroom. She couldn't get his trousers and underwear down quickly enough. Taking his cock into her mouth. Duck, Freya. You're incredible at that, he said in his clear American accent. His compliment made her bob her head harder. Freya loved me eating her kitty, but she was always reticent about going down on me, so I was getting even angrier. Her American lover pulled himself out of her mouth and then pushed her up the bed. Freya had a sultry smirk on her face as her legs parted. She lifted her hips and her dress was pushed up and her panties were removed. The American then plunged his face into her kitty. Freya moaned and her back arched as he set to work. Duck. Duck. She moaned. Don't stop Kyle, duck. I could tell she came hard. Kyle, so that was his name. I was kind of happy to find out his name. I don't know why. I just was. I suppose it made him more human. I then paused the footage. It was then my heart broke. Freya pulled his head up and I saw it. Her eyes sparkled as she smiled at him. The smile she used to only have for me. As I stared at Freya smiling at Kyle, her eyes sparkling, tears flowing down my face, I got a message from Freya. I love you, I miss you. It came with kissing and hard images. To be honest it threw me a curveball. I suppose that is a great phrase to use considering Kyle was American. I decided to call my editing a night. I then got a call from Freya at midnight. She talked to me earnestly with lots of I love you and I miss you so much. My emotions were all over the place. I completed my editing throughout the week, sleeping in the spare room as I couldn't bear to sleep in mine, and was ready to show Frey of the footage when she returned all the while she told me how much she loved me every time she called me. Something struck me when I watched her and Kyle ducking. Frey kept talking about leaving me and transferring to America. Kyle sounded very non-committal, but Frey didn't seem to notice. Oh she. He's married. I exclaimed out loud. That explained why she was telling me she loved and missed me. She went to America and found out he was married. When Freya returned on Saturday, she suddenly became the old Freya again. We made love every day, not even jet lag stopped her. I'm so sorry for being cold for the past year. I love you. I want to start a family with you. She told me with great certainty. Doubt crept into my mind, that was until she was sent homesick from work. She stayed homesick for the rest of the week. I accepted her excuse that it was fatigue from all the traveling. When you love somebody, really love somebody, you can believe the lies. That was until I saw her being sick one morning and the guilty face she hid from me as I came to check on her. My blood ran cold. Let's stay in tonight and watch a film. You need to rest, I told her gently. She smiled weakly at me and agreed. That evening, I poured us some wine and got the popcorn ready for us. She snuggled up to me when I sat down next to her. What are we watching? She asked excitedly. It is a surprise, I told her. I pressed play and footage of Freya ducking Kyle appeared on our television. I felt Freya stiffen next to me. Switch it off. She whispered when she called Kyle baby on the television. Switch it off. She said louder and more panicked. When I didn't, she completely lost it. She stood up and threw her wine glass at the television sending wine and glass everywhere and turned to me wild and white eyed. Switch it off. Switch it off. Switched it off. She screamed over and over again. At the sight of Freya losing control, I did as she wanted. It was now time to talk. Why Freya? Why did you do it? Because you have no ducking ambition in life. She told me. At least he. You mean, Kyle, I interrupted her. Gil swept over her when I mentioned his name, making her infidelity real. I'm sorry Charlie. I screwed up. 
I got carried away, but I'm ready to settle down and spend the rest of my life with you. Freya was openly crying now. Her cheating and lies were now coming home to roost. Ducking hell. Screwed up doesn't even come close. I shouted at her. I love you Charlie, she pleaded desperately. Love me. You wanted to leave me for Kyle. Was it when you found out he was married that you decided to come back to me? How did you know? It was obvious watching you two talk. He never committed to anything and you were too stupid to notice. Charlie, please. I do love you. Freya insisted. You're pregnant, aren't you? I said flatly. She stared at me in horror. The crushing reality then hit me, oh my god. You knew you were pregnant before you went to America, and when you found out he was married, you decided to make love to me to convince me that Kyle's baby was mine. Freya fell down at my feet, gripping my hand tightly, sobbing loudly, the baby is yours. It is yours. It has to be yours. On hearing the last part, I angrily pulled my hand away. We're done, Freya. I want a divorce. I'll do a paternity test when the baby is born, but I doubt it is necessary. We both know it isn't mine, I told her cruelly. I'm so sorry. Freya pathetically sobbed. What have you done, Freya? You got pregnant with a married man's baby, and you are going to be a single mom. Freya just stayed on the floor sobbing, unable to look at me. Was being with me so bad? Was I boring? I did have ambition, just not how you wanted. I'm sorry Charlie, she said between sobs. I got carried away with the excitement of my career. How ambitious Kyle was. I couldn't understand why you weren't career driven like me. When I found out that Kyle was married and he was an asshole and I was pregnant with his baby, I realized too late what I had done. When I talked to him about leaving you, it was after I found out I was pregnant. I was going to surprise him when we went to New York, but he was met at the airport by his wife and children. I felt my whole life crashing down around me, right there and then. You were my only hope. I wanted to give this baby a father, and I knew you would have been a perfect father. I should be carrying your baby. We should be having a family together, a happy family, and now I have ruined everything. Pangs of sympathy came over me. She was now being honest. I felt more sympathy for the baby who would be a permanent reminder to Freya of her infidelity, and being told that its asshole biological father who lived half a world away, wanted nothing to do with it. It was beyond messed up. You can stay here tonight, but I'll call your parents now, and they can pick you up tomorrow. I don't think you should drive anywhere. Six months later, a heavily pregnant Freya agreed to all my demands in the divorce. She cried throughout it all. I took less than I could have because she needed to provide for the baby. That baby was the true innocent party. I took no pleasure being free from her. The court insisted on a paternity test, but when the baby was born the result was never in doubt. Once the paternity test was confirmed and no child support was required our divorce was finalized. Freya's parents were embarrassed and ashamed of their daughter and wished me the best, encouraging me to move on. Freya told Kyle about the baby and being the asshole he was, he refused to accept it was his. I don't know if Freya will go to court in America and try to get him to accept his responsibility, but to be honest, it isn't my problem. I genuinely wish Freya and the baby all the best, and that they find a happy ever after. Her infidelity destroyed her marriage, lost her friends, ruined her career, and she is a single mom with a child the father doesn't want to acknowledge. That level of mistake will scar and haunt her for the rest of her life. I hope she meets someone else who will adopt that child and becomes his father. That child deserves that much. For me, it was back to square one. I was made redundant. They were really embarrassed about it when I told him about me and Freya. They probably thought they were kicking me when I was down. I used the redundancy money and the money from the sale of the house to start a business selling my CCTV system that I built to catch Freya. The business quickly grew and I sold it and the patent, making a fortune. I gave some to Freya who gratefully accepted it, but it also made her regret telling me I had no ambition. She was having a hard time financially so taking the stress of money away helped her enormously. I know I didn't have to, but I still loved her even if I couldn't forgive her. She emailed me now and again to apologize for everything. I met with her one last time at her parents' house to tell her to move on for her own happiness. I never could bring myself to hate her, but if I had it would have gone that day. It was heartbreaking to see her that way. The girl was very cute and looked like Freya. She should have been yours, she told me, and she asked if there was any chance for us again, and begged for me to be the baby's father. It was a desperate thing to ask, so full of regret and low self-esteem. The girl may have looked like Freya, but parts of her looked like someone else who wasn't me. I'm sorry Freya. I've moved on, I replied. I held her as she sobbed until her mother came into the room to let me leave. I then took off on a world tour to clear my head where I met my second wife. I got her pregnant before we married, and that was my traveling life done until I retire, but I am content with that. Thank you for watching.
Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and turn on notifications so you don't miss the next exciting story. See you in the next video.